Ellie, you think anybody's home today? Let's see if they are. Hey, hey, welcome to the kitchen of Love and Light. Let me turn this noise off in the background. Nobody's in the house yet. Let's see if anybody's going to come hang out. Hey, how are you? Tanny Kay and Ellie Mae here to show you what we're going to have for dinner later. First of all, if you ever have um, Craving Crusher Tea by Spice and Herb Exchange, it's really good. Chilled is a nice drink during the day, especially if you're a person who does intermittent fasting and you're trying to cut your cravings. You're still in that phase where you want to eat before it's really time for you to eat because you've realized that sandwiching your food into an eating window really creates longevity and regeneration. If you're that person but you're having a hard time doing it, this is a great thing to get you through in the day and it's also a great thing at night. It's peppermint, licorice, and hibiscus and you could make that herb blend up for yourself. Um, so anyway, I want to show you what I'm having for dinner later because um, I'm going somewhere and I'm going to be bringing some things along and I wanted you to see, I thought this is really a good sauce, easy and quick and delicious. You could also add more veggies into this sauce and turn it into a soup. You can make it into a dressing by just adding a little bit more water. So that's what's going on. If you can see this mess I have, I'm like, <laughs> and by the way, I, I just got back from the gym. So this, you can't see, but this is why. Well, you can't even see. Oh, well, I have on the Lululemons. Hey, what are y'all doing? So let me show you what's going on. That's also why I'm thirsty because it was legs day and I worked out with my Mr. John and he tried to hurt me. There is a new machine called the belt squat machine. Have y'all seen this? It's a platform and you put the belt around like you'd normally have. It's kind of like you normally have when you do the a squat, you know, and, and you're doing a heavy weight, but it's a belt and you, you hook to the cable pulley that's down below and you move the lever. And then, so as you go, you're going down fine, but when you come up is where you get the resistance. And after all, when you're breaking it down, you're building it up, right? So it hurts and it's very effective. Yes, it is. And what's great about it is if you're a person who has a problem with squats, because it puts a lot of pressure on your shoulders and back, and also can put a lot of pressure on your, your lower back, your knees. This really puts you in alignment and you might want to see if your gym has it. Belted um, squat rack, uh, squat, uh, that's not the name. <laughs> My dog is on, that's a little island that I only put like I fold laundry there and I don't really cook over there. It's just the Ellie platform. Now, isn't that right, Ellie? Tell them. Anyway, so let me show you what we're doing and what we're gonna have um, for dinner because this is really good. I also wanna give you a couple little tips and tricks. Just a quick thing. This is the sauce we're doing right here and this is in my uh, vacuum blender which also keeps it from becoming too puffy. It creates a great sauce because it does not pump air down into your sauce or dressing or soup, especially if you're making something that the fat in there is avocado. And even if you're stretching it out, stretch out the fat, you know, so you get more volume and only the fat you need, everything you need and nothing you don't. If you're doing that concept like I do, what's good is when you put an avocado in, if you're gonna blend that in a high speed blender, that it's not a vacuum blender, you need to add that at the end and you need to get everything blended really good at first. Then when you add it into the end, it won't create that puffy mousse-like texture, which happens when you blend in avocado. And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for more of a dense soup. This is a soup I had last night, which was really good, which is celery, avocado, and pepper. And I put the, Insta I put the um, recipe over on my Instagram, but this is just a little bit left. It's a very cool and delicious soup. I'm gonna have this with what I'm fixing to show you. This had um, only a half of an avocado in like half of that blender. So there's a little bit of fat in here, but not much. And then I'm gonna have some of this sauce. So all together, I'm gonna have about 200 calories coming from fat, a little avocado, and in this case, some soaked almonds, so on with the recipe. So first of all, I wanna tell you what this, show what this looks like and how dense it is. Do y'all see how very decadent? This is an awesome, look at that. 
What can make your sauces like this without adding in a whole lot of fat? Because you can sure be like, add on in two cups of pine nuts and a cup of cashews. Okay, that's great. That's a lot of fat. You're like, well, that's good fat. It is good when you're getting just the amount you need. You can really bring down and lower your vibrancy. The vibrancy you've had on a fresh, whole, ripe, raw fruits and vegetables existence, right? With a low, which is what's adequate amount of properly balanced plant fat, hydration, sea vegetables, body movement, boundary setting, border monitoring, and sleep, you know? You can really take that high vibe you're feeling down a notch when you eat too much fat. I eat fat every day in my diet. I have been over or outside fat-free before. This is the way I do it and have been doing it a long time now, which is getting some plant fat in my day every day. Therefore, I have good skin, hair, nails, libido. I really have a very decadent, satiating experience with my dinner. I'm able to create so many great recipes, but I'm still keeping my fat in that about 180 to 200 calories on. So um, anyway, I have a video up here on YouTube called How Much Fat and What Type of Fat. I have some videos called Stretch the Fat. I have one called Make an Awesome Raw Vegan Dressing Every Time. Another one that is my favorite raw vegan dressing base. If you go over there and see those, say, hey, I watched because I wonder when I say those if people come see. I have 3,500 videos and it's all there for you. So anyway, this sauce, I wanna tell you what, what's in it. And um, it smells really good. It smells almost like a French onion and that's kind of bright. I can either have too bright or too light right here in this window, um, or too low if I turn the light off. So here's what was in that. We had a quarter cup of soaked for six hours and drained raw, no salt, no oil, no nothing, almonds, organic almonds, raw. One fourth cup soaked and drained. It is important that you soak those so you can really uptake the nutrients in those. It helps to have the enzyme inhibitors fall away so that you can get all your nutrients today. Bam. So then we have that. Then we had uh, two lemons squeezed. Uh, if you like the pith in there, you could peel and blend those in, flick the seeds out. But in this case, because we already have a, a pretty dense experience, I went ahead and just squeezed those. There were two large, very juicy lemons. So you may need three, depend, it depends. Um, okay, we have one tablespoon of these dried onion flakes, which really gives it a, a punch. It's a power punch. You could use Vidalia sweet onions if you want. I'd probably use about three tablespoons, depending on how pungent those are, but I used one tablespoon of this. Okay, then we had um, a half tablespoon of this, which is Frontier brand organic herb, a garlic and herb spice, half tablespoon. And you can adjust these accordingly to what you like. And then I put in just a little bit of these red pepper flakes. I'm not knowing exactly how many, but maybe, um, maybe ha um, third of a teaspoon, just a little sprinkle. No, no, baby. So anyway, we did that, and you can adjust accordingly. Maybe you don't like that. Hold, please. Come in. And you can't bark at every people, and if you're gonna sit over here, I don't really like you there. Let's put you here. You might touch mommy's food. I'm back. Okay, so anyway, that's what we had. And then we have um, two dried apricots, no, um, non-sulfurized, okay? And I added in a little bit of water to get it to blend. Start out with about a quarter cup, and then you can add in more if you need. But we want it to be a dense experience. If you're a person who doesn't like to put dried fruit in their dressing, I find that it digests pretty good with fat if you're having a pretty simple salad or you're at that point where you can digest that fine. If you can't or you don't like to add in a sweet component, but you want to have this decadent experience, you could use about one tablespoon of lacuma powder. That is a fruit that's dried. It's a fruit from Peru, dried at low temperatures and dehydrated. But the, the interesting thing about it is it's very low glycemic. If you're a person that's watching that, which I do myself, always stretch out any fruit, dried fruit, um, anything like that. Always max nutrients through the greens, the microgreens, but anyway, and balancing my blood sugar because I came from a background where my blood sugar was erratic and I would pass out all the time. I don't do as well if I just eat fruit. And um, I really have been able to bring my health up to another level like that. And also stretching out if I do 
I know this is off topic, but if I do a green smoothie, which I do every day, not only do I do a higher glycemic fruit because I need the calories for a high flying experience of energy, but I also need the balance for a long flight of greens, microgreens, sprouts, but also I put berries in there. Um, because really the phytonutrients and antioxidants and berries, you're really not going to get that anywhere else. And also it balances that's a little lower glycemic with the high lower glycemic with the higher glycemic, giving you a nice middle ground, you know, where you're really balancing your blood sugar so you control what you want to eat. You control choosing the food. You choose the food, it doesn't choose you, right? So anyway, if you wanted to use the lacuma powder. You're gonna ask me, what can I get? I look for a raw organic lacuma powder on Amazon, the one that's most on sale. I find that they usually taste about the same. Same thing with raw vanilla bean powder. Y'all always ask me that. Those two things can, can be more affordable if you'll look out, look around for what's on sale. Anyway, so that's what we have here. We blended it up. Again, the vacuum blenders suck the product down. They First of all, they take the air out, okay? So they're not pumping the air in, and it creates even more dense sauce, is my point in telling you that. So um, that was that, and then I wanna tell you what we're gonna have that over. I'm gonna have this little bit of the um, avocado soup, which I told you was still low fat, and it's only a little bit in there. Then I'm gonna have um, greens, and this will just be a small bowl of what I'm having. And then I'm gonna have cucumber noodles right here. Do y'all see that? Now, if you've ever made cucumber noodles ahead of time or made cucumber noodles, you will realize that they're very moist and they can become what's like sitting in a lot of liquid, you know, cucumber juice. Now, some people cannot digest cucumbers well. So if you're one of those people, you might you wanna buy these organic too. You might wanna consider peeling off the green because just like squash and zucchini, that's very rubbery and it's very hard to digest, so you may want to peel that off. But in my case, I didn't. My favorite way to make noodles, zoodles, cucumber noodles, anything like that, is not really with a spiralizer, but it's with one of these, which is a Titan brand peeler, and this is the Julianne peeler, and you can see there's a little cube stuck in there right now where I was just using it. But you can get these at Walmart, Amazon. I have them on my, um, my favorite things over on my website where a lot of the things that I always use are listed over there, by the way. But anyway, this is the Julianne peeler. This comes in a set of two. One is just a regular peeler, which makes good like fettuccine style noodles. Or if you wanna do like um, little cucumber wraps or like cucumber sushi, that kind of thing, it gives a nice even consistent cut too. But what you wanna do is just peel down to the seedy part because the seeds are not gonna create great noodles for you. And also it's gonna be too moist. They get caught up in here. Another thing is something to clean these out. What's really perfect is a juicer brush or one of these that you can find everywhere there for straws. And you can just get right up in there and get any little debris out in case it gets caught up. So um, this is super handy and super fast. So I wanted to show you what this looks like um, being cut. And I, I really just don't have the area right here that allows you to see what the heck I'm doing. But, but, because then I'm going to have to look like a chicken with my elbows out in my area. <laughs> Can y'all see? So anyway, what you want to do is cut off each end. You want to already have it washed and dried, which I do. And when you get it in here, you want to really, this is harder because I'm trying to show you, but get it dug in there really good. Take it all the way down to the end and drop it down. And you want to pull them out, you see? Because if you don't pull them out, it's going to get stuck in there and it's not going to make a, a nice cut each time. Cucumbers are the trickiest things to make noodles out of, and that's why I'm showing you that. But anyway, you're just gonna get this going. You'll see what I'm doing? Bring it all the way down to the bottom until you get to the seeds right there, and then you're going to stop, okay? What do you think, Ellie? This is how we do it. Okay, again, just down to the seeds, take it on around. Make sure you don't nick this on your finger because it will cut you. And some people are going to be like, you're cutting towards you. This is how I do it. Why are you using your left hand, Tammy? Because I'm left-handed. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So you can see the point. So I want to show you what that looks like. There's another key to this. Okay, so when you have it like this, you want to make sure you pull them out of the end. And then this is where, where did I put that little thing? Okay. This is where you're gonna get these all out of here with this. It's very easy, rinse it, and then there you go. 
beautiful. When you have them like this, they look dry, don't they? Okay, but they, but they're not. Look at that. Look how fast that was. Are y'all liking this demo? But what you want to do before you put them in your bowl that you're going to add your sauce, ultimately, after you squeeze these out, you could set them in a colander. Like you could set them in your colander. After you squeeze them out over your bowl, okay, just put you a little um, dish rag or something on top and set them in your fridge. They're going to continue to drain some. So then when you go to use them, you will just drink that cucumber juice out of the bottom, and then you're going to take the noodles and add the sauce. But you can add this ahead if you get them squeezed out good, and also if you have a sauce that's really dense. This sauce right here, you see, it could have used, if I wanted to add a little bit more water, I could make it into a dressing. If I wanted to add a couple of tomatoes in there, and a zucchini, some spinach, I could turn it into a green soup. I'm not gonna use all of this, so what I'm gonna do is leave the rest in this vacuum blender. When I leave the rest in this vacuum blender, which would be about half, then I'm gonna put the top on, I'm gonna allow it to vacuum seal again. I'm gonna stick it in the refrigerator, and then tomorrow, or probably the next day, because see, tomorrow I wanna go with omega-3. This is omega-6, this has almonds in here. So anyway, probably the next day, which will be Saturday, I will turn this into a soup or a dressing. Bam, that's how you do it. Make it work for you so you can quit making an excuse and you can, in fact, make it happen. So anyway, when you have your cucumber noodles, you will notice these, they look a lot like Asian glass noodles. Can somebody let Carly know that I'm doing a live video? Uh, see that? Look at these. Doesn't that look beautiful? So they're a lot like Asian glass noodles once you get them squeezed out good. Now, if you have um, arthritic hands or your hands aren't that strong, you can put them in between two plates and squeeze them down. You can also put them on a cutting board and roll over them with a rolling pin at a slight diagonal and it will drip off. But squeezing them into two plates is a really good thing to do. Then you can put them in between two dish rags and squeeze them really hard. Um, or even put them in between the two plates. The reason I say that about the arthritic hands is because for years I couldn't bend my fingers, and now I can. Healing is real, friends. So anyway, until then, use the plates. So what you're gonna do is you are going to, by the way, these are Debbie Meyer green boxes. These are great, these are my favorites right here that are um, the large ones, they're like bread box size, because you can have every stuff in here. It, they hold so much, and the thing is, it allows the off gases of your fruits or greens, veggies, microgreens, sprouts to out of the box. It lets the gas off gases out, but it does not let the external air in. This will keep your produce fresh so much longer. It's ridiculous. So um, again, that's one of those things where, well, I can't go to the grocery store every day. So don't. So make it happen like this. When you store things in these, you don't want to wash it ahead of time. Okay, I'm just showing you in this, but because um, I'm fixing to make this sauce, I'm gonna show what it looks like. So anyway, what you're gonna do is either in between two plates, or like I said, with your hands, make sure your hands are clean, or, or you're just serving yourself. Okay, and you, okay, do you see how that's really, do y'all see that? You know, it didn't look like it had that much water. The thing is, if you go ahead and put that with your sauce, you're gonna go back later and it's gonna look like your noodles and sauce are sitting in a pond and that's not what you want. So you really can squeeze good, you see what I'm saying? Okay, then you're gonna add them in your bowl, okay? Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add in the sauce, okay? So we have these right here. And what I also did, because I knew I would be showing y'all this and I wanted it to blend quickly, is take your scissors and you just Go down in here like this and give them a couple of cuts if you want, okay? That's all you want, fancy like that, okay? Then we're gonna add in the sauce. We don't wanna use it all, we're gonna use some. Again, look at this thick sauce, it's really ridiculous. Oh yeah, you can see. I don't wanna use it all because I'm managing my fat for the day, right? And it really doesn't need that much, so. I'm gonna put this down here so I can mix it up for you. update video the other day and I and I got off of that and I thought that went really good like I was explaining 
you know, where the heck Greggy Not Raw is. And I was talking about just things coming in and out of your life, you know, and um, and how it's okay. How some things, maybe maybe they're meant for a lifetime. And, and maybe other things, the lifetime of that relationship is just short, and that's okay. And, and really stepping back after something like that and assessing what could you have done better? What could I have done better? What what things did we not line up in? And, and maybe, you know, you look for something different next time. Or you just, I don't know, I just don't really see situations as good or bad like that anymore. And it's, it's really great. Um, let me chop this a little more because I want you to see it. I don't want to have to stir it forever. Okay, so you, what else I'm fixing to tell you, which is going to be the... Look, it's like my ex, the raptured one, his uncle Layton used to say, a woman's hire, she, he said hire for hair, a woman's hire is her crown of glory. Anyway, it's going to be the crown of glory on this dish is what I was going to say. Thank you, Uncle Layton. Come on, can you please? Can I get a taste test? I've been yapping on here for 20 minutes. Okay, so the recipe's at the beginning if anybody wanted to see that. And I'll just plate this up and show you what it looks like. Give you a little taste test of this sauce though because, um. Bam. That tastes a lot like French onion dip. You gotta try that one. Okay. Everything I make is good. And if it's not, let's, I'll just keep on adding and subtracting by adding other things, subtracting flavors until I get it right. Let's say you make some crackers and you're unsure of how to make them really stick together as crackers because you're trying to make no fat and you have not watched my playlist called Dehydrator Series and you don't have my book called Butterfly Crackers. Bam, that was a plug. So, <laughs> anyway. Let's say, let's say you are, and you're trying to do that without adding fat. I mean, you can make a flax cracker all day. You didn't even grind those flax seeds. Girlfriend, you can't digest those. You can't get the nutrients out of that. Second of all, that's just going to become a flax log in your guts, and you don't understand why you're constipated because there is an actual flax log in your intestine. Anyway, but let's say you're doing that, and you're having like some trial and error, and you're like, I just can't do this raw food. I don't understand. I'm, my stuff's not coming out right. So maybe they pull it apart and they weren't one cracker, but they were croutons. Bam, you make croutons. And then next time you're going to understand you need to get a blended base. You need to add in some texture of the veggies. Then, hey, Jan, my neighbor's home. Then you want to get it nice and packed tight, right? So anyway, look at this. The recipe for this is at the beginning of the video. We're gonna plate this up and I'm gonna show what it looks like for later. Absolutely ridiculously good. Um, I have 8,500 posts over on Instagram if you don't follow me there and I typically give the recipes every day. I gave the recipe for that little soup over there yesterday too. And then, this is what it looks like. Come on, can you look? Show what else we're gonna do. So, let's, um, let's see how I can show you. First of all, look at that. Can y'all, could y'all not get on board with soup and salad with zoodles? Huh? Look at that. Almost spilled it. But let me, let's go in here to see what's going to be the crown of glory, okay? Because you have to see, really, you do. So, over here... In the cabinet of love and life, okay? Ah! What do you think? This cabinet used to be a TV cabinet, and the raptured one, and I got this when we first got married um, when I was 21, so that's how old it is. And now it's this, and it, I've stored things in it for years because I haven't had a TV in a decade, but what's great about this is it can do two flats wide it can also do four narrow because see it will actually shut still with that in there so ultimately i could put another shelf too so i could have four eight i could have 12 i've got some german any station down here at the bottom really if you split it like this and you have one light i have these things linked in my last youtube video that shows 
uh, growing microgreens. It's a few videos back, maybe three. You can find it there on my videos. But anyway, these lights, they can split. And so one is plenty for one tray, or you can do two like this. You don't want to get them too close. And these really don't get hot. They're only barely warm like that. Now, my friend Jules says she got some of these lights, and hers were hot. And mine, like, they're, they're warm, but it's not burning me. You know, the, this part's even cooler. Anyway, so these are purple radish microgreens, seeds from True Leaf Market, trays from bootstrapfarmer.com, um, Terra hemp mat from Amazon. I bought in bulk so I could, it turns out to be like um, about 70 cents a tray. But let me show you, we're watering, we're bottom watering. So every day I'm pulling this back half the way and I'm watering the bottom with a hydroponic solution by oceansolution.com. You can just use water. The reason I bottom water is because it's very humid in my house. That's why I have this thing right here that's called the Bad Mamma Jamma, the biggest dehumidifier in Lowe's, okay? And it pulls out about three gallons of water out of this house every four hours. That's how humid it is in here. Anyway, so because microgreens, you would think they like a greenhouse experience, but what they really like is more of a arid experience, but you don't want them to get too hot, say 68 to 78 degrees, and you want to make sure they're moist. So if you're Carly out there in San Diego, she is going to have more moisture on hers every day than me. She's going to need to water hers more than me. I just water mine once a day. Also, she could probably top water, but in my case, if I top water this very dense, clearly it's a dense crop, right? That's heavily seeded mat. What's going to happen is the water's going to sit up here on top of the canopy and it's going to create too much moisture of possibly creating mold okay but i've not had mold you have to have a strategy for your area don't give up it's just like raw food it's just like learning to ride your bike it's just like whatever you're doing right okay so anyway we're going to be adding these I, I could harvest all these today this is day five of the grow okay five days from no soaked seeds to this bam now what i'm going to do is i'm going to come in here and i'm going to trim some of these off and i'm going to add them into that noodle dish and on top of my soup and then i'm going to plate them beautifully so i can inspire the world to eat living food you know have a mission in this world won't you so anyway there we go this is the one inch drainer tray you see how there's holes in the bottom and this is the two inch in catchment tray that has no holes in the bottom obviously right some people like to use these and this would be if you have a very arid experience and you like to keep the moisture in i can use that like the first day but i don't need it the cabinet um if you're going to try to use this in a cabinet experience mine doesn't get too hot in there i keep the door shut and i just think like I thought about getting this this giant wire rack. I did get it, and Christopher was like, your eyeballs are not gonna be able to look at that. There's wires showing, there's so, and I just, it dawned on me, I could use this. But I also had this two lights down here. So see how great that is? Does anybody have any questions about that? I'm sure you do, but um, I can't really see. Hello, friends. So I won't look too much at that right now because then after the fact, people, it's like they're peeping in on someone else's conversation <laughs> because they're not live and we are, you know? So um, anyway, that's what we're having in the Cottage of Love and Light. And I'm going to either uh, do something with a friend I'm hanging out with or and, and we'll eat here or I'm going to take that there. But here's what we have. If you want this recipe, it's over on my Instagram. This is the avocado celery soup, okay? Some mild microgreens. Broccoli is pretty mild. Clover is very mild. I like alfalfa. I like the zesty mix, and I find it a little more on the... It sounds spicy, but I really don't find that it is. So many different kinds you can use. I did some the other day that were turnip microgreens, and they're very mild. The clovers I love, and they made a great crop. Uh, Anyway, so again, what we have, we had this recipe at the beginning. I'm teaching you how to make a great cucumber noodle and have success with that. Uh, we had the sauce, and that's what we did in the kitchen of Love and Light. So thank you for coming over, and, um, and maybe I'll try to have another 
a, a life update where I chat a little more about that. But, you know, too, just for, for you all that, you know, it's a thing where I've showed my life all these years. And when I have a life change, I know y'all think, oh, well, what happened? Or, um, well, where's Christopher? And, and sometimes it's not just my story. There's other people involved in the story. And so it's, it's always tricky to, to me to have an understanding of what's, what's the best way and, and the most to put out there or the least, you know what I mean? So, um, and in that case, it's not just my story. It's also, it's also Greggy's story. And, I, and he's, he's a great man, you know, he's a great guy and I'm a great girl. And we had a love story for a short time, you know, and, um, and that's okay. And, you know, when you go through things like that, though, do you, do you really like take time to process it? Do you take time to think about it? I mean, this has been um, over for a little while, uh, come to an end. I won't even say over. It's, that stint of time has been um, passed for a little while now, and I've had some time to really process that. And, you know, it's just your emotions in motion, not good or bad. You know, living and loving and and realizing that every moment is precious. Every experience is precious. Every day you have the opportunity to get up and say, I want to love myself. I love myself because I'm enough because I am the one who has healed. I'm the one who's healing. I'm the one who will heal. You know, I'm beautiful just because I'm a million, trillion, godzillion cells in this bag of body in this space and time. You know, born to my mommy and daddy that has an accent like me here in South Carolina. Nobody else will ever be me. And I want to have self-love. I don't want to wait to have self-love. I want to have it now. I don't want to wait to get started. There's no waiting required. There's no approval required from the world. Just you. Nothing's holding you back but you. I want to get up with that attitude every day. And then I want to think to myself, how can I show love? Self-love to show love. Self-love to show love in hopes of receiving love. And at the end of the day, asking, did I show love? You know, that's what it's all about. Did I show love? Did I show understanding? Did I try to hear people when they talked? Did I try to have sympathy and most of all, empathy? Did I try to feel what they're saying? Did I look back into their eyes when they were talking? Did I try to notice and have gratitude for the love that I am receiving when I have self-love, give love, and hopes to receive love? The love when I look in the eyes of my puppy the love when I go outside and breathe the fresh air, the love I have for Mr. John today when I was at the gym and, and we were working together on, on the machines and he was telling me a story. And I was just thinking about what gratitude I have for his knowledge and wisdom and what a mentor he is to me. And having gratitude for his kindness and patience and for his wife there and just um, having gratitude for beautiful food and, and all that is love. All that is love. And so many times we can hope to have this healing. We can hope to have enough money and, and enough dollars to pay our bills. And, and then we don't have gratitude when we do have those things. It's like we forget to be thankful. So I don't want to forget to thank you today for allowing me to be me. Allowing me to love you in my own special way. To come here and be perfectly imperfect to have ups and downs in my life and it be okay. I had somebody say to me, well, that was a love story you showed. And you showed that to the world. And now what? I said, what do you mean? It's just me. Don't you love it when people show they're perfectly imperfect and how they fall when they get back up? Because that's what it's all about. In life, if you're not stumbling and tripping and and hurting yourself and, and being in resistance and, and being under pressure and all that, if you're not slipping and tripping your way to success, you're not doing anything different. You're not getting gains in your life. You, you're possibly one of two things, either lying or you're not even trying, you know? And I just think it's so beautiful and so wonderful to be in a place in my life where I feel like showing love. 
showing love and that the universe is working in my favor. And sometimes I just don't understand it yet, you know? So I hope that you try this recipe. It's at the beginning of the video. If you want the celery avocado recipe, it's over on my Instagram, along with so many other things. And I hope you come back again to the Cottage of Love and Light. And um, I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye.